another dang dash session of Healing as Gangster. Uh, for those of y'all who just are just tuning in or have or seen this for the first time, um, Mr. Dang Dash has been so gracious as to, uh, Mr. Dang Dash has been so gracious as to, you know, let, let the world see some of his healing process and therapeutic conversations between between him and I, uh, you know, that therapeutic guest, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, dang. Bless him, so. Yeah. A lot going on as usual. Yeah, you know, a lot of things have been going on the last couple of weeks. You know, I had to be this for my brother. We were there a couple of times. You know, to be creative, almost as therapy, mm-hmm. and also to deal with certain things. And to be honest, the craziest thing and the most important thing in this moment for me is that Raquel is, uh, you know, six and a half months pregnant. And this is around the time, you know, in the pregnancy last time that things went left. And, you know, I'm really happy that we were able to get back where we were at so quickly, like, you know, it was almost like yesterday. And she's completely happy. I won't say healed, because I don't think anyone can heal that fast. But definitely completely happy. But still there's that fear, that that tinge of, of, well, because I went through something before, of course I should be feeling a certain way now. I mean, definitely feeling some trepidation. Yeah, going on. Absolutely. But knowing that I'm supposed to feel that, yeah. I don't let it bother I know I'm supposed to feel that it would be inhuman for me not to. So I just accept that feeling, and then it doesn't bother me anymore because then I know I'm human. All right, what is the process of acceptance for people? Who- well, as soon as I feel concerned, that's an unfamiliar thing to me. And then I analyze my concern because I don't want to feel it anymore. Right. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm supposed to feel that. I just went through this before. That's normal. Yeah. And then on with my head. So you're actually dealing with the actual emotion within itself, and then you're reasoning it. Yes, within the emotion, I bring logic. Yes. And I know not to listen to emotion. I'm very clear on that. Yes. I know emotion is something that kicks in unconsciously. Mm-hmm. It's a hormone. It's a chemical reaction, from what I understand. It works the same way. Yeah. yeah. So if I know that I'm going to feel something, it's almost like if I know I'm going to get punched in my face, it doesn't usually knock me out or hurt me so much. Absolutely. I mean, anything, we have a, a saying in psychology that says anything that's uh, psychological is instantly biological. Yeah. You know, so. You know, having unconscious anxiety, just mentally, even if it's unconscious, the body picks it up. Mm-hmm. And the body will react to it without you knowing it. Mm-hmm. And obviously that's when the indecisions come, or, you know, uh, even health problems, like, you know, like you said, high, like you said, high blood pressure and things of that nature. You know, what you're describing is actually called cognitive behavioral therapy. You know, which is, uh, in, that, in, that, in that viewpoint, in that intervention, that's basically what it's taught is to look at all your options of how to deal with this emotion. First, recognizing the emotion, not getting over, uh, you know, not getting overwhelmed by the emotion, and then reasoning it out, and then thinking, okay, how can this be positive? How can this go positive for me? What are the good things I need to do to make this go positive? It's crazy because every doctor's appointment that me and Nicolette, because we wait in the car for Rocky because we can't go up because yeah. COVID. I have a conversation with her. I'd be like, you know, I always feel kind of nervous until I get the call and everything's all right, just what I'm supposed to, so it's okay. Absolutely. But I always recognize it. You know, because a feeling is a feeling. And what I also recognize is when I don't like a certain feeling. So I'm the kind of person that if something hurts me, I'm not doing it again. Or I'm going to figure out, come on in. Or I'm going to figure out how not to let it affect me in that way. Right. But being conscious of your trigger and being conscious of trauma is something we spoke about. See, the thing is, I'm conscious 
that what we went through for a human is supposed to be traumatized. I don't think it's normal to go through that, even though it happens to a lot of people. I still know I'm supposed to take time for myself to feel that pain and get over it. It's a process. It's always a process. Yeah, you have to process those emotions. And, you know, that That's takes work. But I think sometimes people, and we just discussed this, we just discussed it. If you can't recognize trauma, you can't heal yourself. Right, absolutely. We have to know when we're in pain and know we're in pain so that we're out of pain. Right. You know, some people think it's normal to move around wounded. Well, I mean, you're going to get wounded in life, you know? Well, I think, come on, Andrea. I think what I'm saying is some people think it's normal when they're bleeding to walk around bleeding. Oh, right, absolutely. There are some people get comfortable in They get comfortable. It's like, I know people that have toothaches for months, and I'm like, how the f could you wake up every morning? And they scared of the dentist. And you scared of the dentist that you rather be in this pain. Yeah. That's you know, I, I, I have a friend of mine that, you know, knew something was wrong, but just would not go to the doctor. And we really had to hammer down on this person to make sure they went. And when they did go, had they not, it would have been sure that they would be not on this planet anymore in this form. Because sometimes people know they hurt and they won't fix it. Yeah. It's like sometimes people are afraid of the pain they have to go through to fix what's wrong so much because it's unknown that they'd rather just be in pain instead and, of fixing it. Yeah. And that's, and they program themselves to, that, that they've been through so much pain that it's worse to actually look at the unknown and think there might be some more pain there. They, they like, that becomes something that they run away from and they'll just stick in their pain because they know it. You see, I'm a guy who doesn't like being in pain, yeah. you know? And what I've recognized about life is that pain is inevitable. Because somebody you love is gonna die. That's gonna happen at some point in your life. And in between that, because that's the pain that no one, that's the worst shit. And it, it can't control it. So anything I can control, out of appreciation for the fact that I'm not in that pain, I'm gonna enjoy life. Absolutely. I'm gonna enjoy life. Because when that pain comes, you're like, why wasn't I enjoying myself last week? I wish I had the same problems that I had last week now as opposed to just losing somebody I lost or hurting myself or doing something I regret. Why can't people enjoy their life in the moment? Why does it always take something really bad for you to understand how good your life is? It's just one of those things, you know, experience is the biggest teacher sometimes, you know, to, you know, it actually is good, it's good sometimes. You know, life is struggle. You know, life is a constant conflict. It's a test. It is, constantly. You know what I mean? The art of war is real. But some people say to themselves, why me all day? And it's like, you know what, everything happened to you is happening to everybody. You just deal with it wrong. Right. You know, life is, stress is supposed to be a good thing. You know, stress and moderation actually keeps you motivated. It says, you know what, instead of procrastinating, I'm going to handle this today. It makes you evolve. You know, yeah, exactly. But like anything, like most things in life, if you overindulge on stress, you're going to get a bad, you know, you're gonna, it's going to equate to bad things, you know? The only thing that makes me stress are my triggers, and that's disrespect. I haven't been able to get over that trigger yet. Disrespect. People disrespect me on any shape, level, or form, the ball. I mean, that's understandable. Nobody likes to know disrespect. There's so many people are disrespectful that really don't have the power to be. And I hate to give somebody weaker than me the power to disrespect. So what does that tell you about what you're feeling? Is it worth feeling that? Are you letting this, are you letting these people bother you even though they really don't have a chance to do anything to you? Well, when somebody like robs me or cons me, like these editors that I've been working with, mm -hmm. and I know they're weak, I do feel the only thing that's gonna make me feel better is to legally do something. When I drop lawsuits, I always feel better. Depositions always make me feel better. I think accountability is all I want in this world. That's all I want, is accountability. I hate when someone does something wrong and won't admit it, because then they're gonna do it again. 
I love when someone does something wrong and can admit it and be better the next time. I, I really respect that in a person. I mean, do you think you're doing everything you can on your side as far as dealing with those, dealing with those issues and dealing with the disrespect or holding people accountable? I just eliminate those people from my world. You can disrespect me once and they're going to twice. So you know how to deal with it. You actively deal with it in that way. So why does it still bother you afterwards? I don't know. I don't, I don't ever like being hungry when it happens. You know? I don't think it's something I would be able to get over in that moment. I don't like pain when it happens. You know? Right. So it's just something in business you know you sometimes you have to tolerate and you just have to know how to deal with it when it happens. And I know momentarily, like, literally, like, a nerve disrespect to me will make me wake up at, like, four in the morning, just, like, smoke a joint, like, I gotta deal with that, you know? Right, or else internally, I don't like internalizing. Do you feel, I mean, do you feel like you're internalizing these things? To your detriment? Until, no, no, because I, I only internalize until I get it done. So, I'll think about it in the, in the wee hours in the morning, and during the afternoon it gets handled because I have a strategic plan to get myself out of that pain. So why do you think it still bothers you, is the question? In the moment. In the moment. So like it's I said, how I, I, until, until like, until, the word, but like this, if somebody smacks you, I'm not going to feel better until I punch their teeth out. If it happens a week later, in between that week, I'm going to be bothered. Until I get my off. Until I can swing back. And swinging back makes me feel better. Do you think there's ever a time where you're you would just look at it and say, you know what, that shit ain't worth my time. Is there ever one of them moments? Well, my problem is if sometimes you don't handle things, it gets bigger or it pause and starts to happen more by other people. So my street rules come in. I need to make an example of you. Like Chris Brown. That's why I've been making sure I make an example of that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very honest about what he's doing. Work publicly. I mean, the lawyer, Chris Brown. Yeah, no, yeah. And anybody, anybody, anybody who doesn't know, yeah, the lawyer. Right. <laughs> this is a dude that's from our culture that, like, you know, has his own financial problems and he's really trying to come up and he puts other people in jeopardy, other people's business in jeopardy by wasting their time and just really lying, you know? I mean, is there something, the way you deal with every one of these slights against you, I mean, is there anything about that you want to change? Or is it's it part of the game? Feel like you just I just feel it's part of the game. Yeah. It's like bootlegging. Right. You yeah. know, like, I used to flip tables over that shit. Yeah. So you've accepted it as just a fact. I look now I'm even a good thing. I look at that marketing. So I look at Chris Brown, like marketing. Like, this is what happens when you fuck with If you're not right. If you're lying. You're just going to waste your time and look stupid. And your friends are going to laugh at you. And no one's going to respect you. Right. Just because of what you honestly are doing. You know, I don't know why anybody plays with somebody with a platform. That's the stupidest shit. Well, I mean, some people are trying to do exactly what you said, market it, get, their, get theirs on. That's why I asked you. you no, know, I get it, but like, they don't have a strong platform. You know, like I said, I don't see why you want to be wrong and mess with somebody that's right with that person having a platform. Have a television network. Right. I mean, I feel like I, and I can make movie, I'm gonna make a movie about Chris Brown. It's gonna happen. I mean, I just know that I'm gonna make money off him. No doubt. And people are gonna learn about what happens when you're from the culture and you still don't give a fuck about the culture. You want to make a good black man look bad for another culture just to pay off your tax debt. Right. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you're a lawyer. You can't pay eight thousand, man. You shouldn't even be a lawyer. <laughs> I mean, I do think that there's people that's addicted to attention to the point where they don't care what type of attention they get, even if it's a Who wants attention from another man? Not a lot of people. Who wants attention Who wants attention for you, please? You know the game you in, bro. Nah, that's the one. I ain't in <laughs> oh, you know My point is, I know what I'm up to this all party game. Yeah, right. And I expect dumb lawsuits. I expect to have to make examples out of people. But at the end of the day, I'm always honest. I never let anything out. And I take that. Yeah. She's the only kid. I mean, I think that's the good thing about that situation is you know how to deal with it, you know, you know how to spot it out, and you know what she'll do. He's a sucker. But, again, 
those situations in that moment don't last long. Yeah. Because I'm having such a great life. And that's what I was gonna say, like and and getting it I have to, you know me, right? Yeah. When people start with me, I call you as I look up what I'm about to do. And I'm gonna say, look up what's fun. Yeah. I always have fun playing with my yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I play with the ops. Oh, you know what Because the ops with the chess board be off. So I just don't like it when the ops is the cops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no reason for the cops to be fucking with. Cause I ain't going nothing illegal. None of so. So, you know. Which is why the camera's on. Absolutely. My intent is love and to spread it and to just isolate whoever is not. That's all. I mean, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, back to what you were talking about before as far as, like, dealing with wifey and baby and all of that stuff, right? Like, you've already established that you know how to deal with negative emotions, right? Mm -hmm. But then after that comes the redirection of that energy mm -hmm. into the positive. Saying, okay, you know what? I can't wait to get back. All of it. I can't wait to, you know, all see this is my son walking. I can't, you know, all these different things that, you know, both of us have experienced. And, you know? and just the celebration of her power. Exactly. Like, knowing that my, my woman is as strong as I thought she was. And she stepped up effortlessly, got knocked off the horse, and got back on. Exactly. Quickly. Effortlessly, right. seamlessly, beautifully. And, and is there to help others, because that's what she's been doing. You know what I mean? It's, I, I knew we, we go through just to help people, you know? I know it. I think if people, you know, learn more about that process and actually implement it into their lives, you know, you'll have less things like we were talking about earlier, you know, you'll have less people killing each other, you know, you'll have less, you know, disagreements going there, you'll get, you know, you'll get more of people dealing with their disagreements effectively and productively and things like that, just through that process, you know what I'm saying? Well, not everybody's lucky enough to have a friend that's a therapist, you know? I just wish on every block there should be an undercover therapist that just decide to disguise himself as a friend. Because on every block, everybody, no matter what, respects intelligence. Absolutely. You know, that's one thing I know in the hood. You come with a plan and you're smart, mm -hmm. people listen. And, and we got some of the smartest kings and queens in the hood. Like, every hood I've been to, and I've lived in a lot of hoods across the country, you know what I'm saying? Every hood I've been to, there, there's always the therapist. There's always that dude. It's just that, you know, a lot of us don't have, you know, I've been disciplined enough to you know, go get the degrees and stuff, but I feel like I was this before I got on any of this paperwork. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the more, what we need, what we need to do and what we are doing is making it cool to come out and say, like you said, yo, you know what? I got this brain on my shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Follow my example. Be proud of being intellectual. Proud of being smart, you know what I'm saying? Which is something that both of us, like we were talking off camera, you know, we saw the process of how brave you have to be to do that because it gets looked at when you're in the hood, it gets looked at like, or you know, at least when we was coming up, it's like you, if you're smart, well, that means you're weak. And that's, well, that's what someone that's not smart was playing. Yeah. And what we were speaking, you know, it was like, I know people that are close to me that are intelligent, and I watch them get around a mass of dumb people yeah. and literally act up. Just to fit in. Right. A smart person actually acting dumb to fit in is that makes no sense. That means fear. Yeah. You know? I think it happens a lot that does that you shouldn't. I think it happens a lot just within, you know, the culture, within the music. It happens a lot. I think a lot of dudes dumb make stuff down just to you know. Oh, definitely there's certain conversations that I've been in in certain areas where I'm like, I gotta get out of here because I gotta say something or I have to pretend that I agree with something stupid. Right. Right. And I, I'm not doing that. I, I go into a lot of uh, situations where because the person in the room has the most power, they could be saying or the most money because they're paying anybody, they could be saying the stupidest shit in the world and everybody's sitting around shaking their head. And I don't understand how people do that. I don't get it. Yeah, well that's that's part of our goal, man. Just to, you know, stop them things from happening and uh, pull the wolf in people's eyes when it comes to that, you know. And again, you know, I think the therapy, especially somebody like yourself who's showing that they're being showing this process. That's why I feel like it's so valuable. Because that same process, if implemented in any aspect of life, you'll get improvements, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, can, it affects crime, it affects your business economically, like all of that. You know, like we just said, like even in the music, how people, how, how niggas is acting in real life, it reflects in the music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes know the truth and they're scared to say the truth. You know what I'm saying? So that's never been an issue for you. That's, you can go look up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So 
But I mean, besides that, it seems like life is good, bro. You know, life is beautiful. I want to give a big shout out to, to mommy. Oh yeah, and uh, the other young lady that lost her life in her family. Mate. What was it called? Mate. Mate. Yeah. Um, senseless violence. Caught a bullet that wasn't there for, and uh, left the, left the child, a seven year old son, and he was a very giving person. And uh, you know, when you see a good family, you can tell a good family. And uh, it looked like, from what I the conversation, she had nothing but good people around her because she did nothing but good things. And it's, it's, it sucks when good people got hurt for no reason, bro. Absolutely, you know, and. It's crazy because I have been, you know, I was, I was watching, you know, the news, it was kind of paying attention, and I've just been seeing a rash of these things being reported or happening. I mean, obviously these things have been happening for years, but like, even on, even around July 4th, I was hearing stories of little kids getting killed in these, you know, in the, in the shootings and stuff and things like that. And, you know, I was, you know, even if you're in the streets, I mean, that gotta improve, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, that's, us as brothers killing each other, and thinking it's all right, celebrating it, making that a medal. Yeah. That is the most backwards in the world. Yeah. But no matter what your brother does to you, your real brother, which is what we all are, you ain't never supposed to intentionally hurt him, bro. Your brother gets passed. Absolutely. I mean, and it's even, and it's even more tragic when people, you know, civilians, people have nothing to do with nothing. You know, these babies. But that be their sister, you know? They, you know my thing is we set it on each other, but we never set it on our oppressor. And that's programming. Right. And that's what has to stop. Like, I don't think any violence is good, but it's like, yo, you're gonna hurt somebody. Why are you gonna hurt your brother? Because somebody hypnotized you into thinking that these other people that are hurting you are untouchable, and that the only way you can, you know, get your shit off is to hurt someone that you actually should be loving. Yeah. That needs your help. Yeah. And that's like we said in that town hall, I feel like, us as educators, us as people who, who, who people listen to, like it's our job to go to the neighborhoods, like actually go to the hoods and, and spread this information. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like... It's just corny to hit your brother, though. You know, it, it, but there's a lot of trauma, like we talked before, that's not being addressed yeah. on both ends. On both ends. You know, the, the okay. shooter, the shooter, a, a, a lot of the time it's is hurt. feeling some kind of pain because yeah. they lost somebody and they angry. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody you know, took their loved ones. You know, so instead well, of being, cycle. yeah, instead of being empathetic, you know, because of all the pain they learned to numb themselves. You know what I'm saying? They say, you know what? No, 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 no. I want you to feel what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Why and, not? Let, you don't want your brother. To, I know me. Yeah. Every single time my kid just said, I'd be like, yo, let me get that coat. I don't want them to feel none of my pain. Not the people I love. Now. When I'm in pain, the people I don't love, I do want them to feel it. But it ain't gonna be someone that has the same color or from the same culture. It's gonna be someone that's gonna be hurting. Yeah. Or that's gonna hurt somebody I love. But I'm not I'm not gonna hurt one of us, no matter what. You yeah. know, I try, unless it's defense, I ain't having no beef with nobody from my culture, period. All day, you know? And we gotta start, you know, we gotta start in the households, you know? Raise your kids. Don't let the streets raise these kids. Raise your kids. It is so important, you know what I'm saying, to, to be there for them and to teach them these things because if not, they will go under somebody else's wing, you know what I'm saying? More than likely, the wing that they under is also a damaged, traumatized, numb they, they, person. They, they, they show them how to survive yes. in the jungle. Absolutely. And, that, that, and this moment may not be so necessary as other ways. Yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah. Shout out to Melody, that was a great conversation. Something I hope to forward, you know. Like I said, you, you know, you will see us out there doing this. You feel me? So we gonna be going something. We ain't gonna be asking. We gonna be the ones right. taking care of each other. We not depending on another culture yeah. to help us. That's trying to oppress us. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna help each other. We don't need a policy. You know, they're great and everything, but me personally, I don't need to wait on policy. I don't need to wait on budgets from the government and nothing for go for me to go talk to my people mm -hmm. and get this healing going. That's the same thing we're doing on this microphone right now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You feel me? So that's what healing this gangster is about. You feel me? Anything? Last words? Mr. Dane does. You know, the future looks bright. I wake up every morning and I'm happy and I look forward to the day. You know? It's just crazy, man. Like, what the seeds that I planted, it took 
10 years for them to grow. And I wasn't still, that was still quick to me. You know, patience for something you love, it doesn't really feel like it's taking so long. When you're making advancement, you're chipping away at it. But if you believe in something wholeheartedly, it will yield. You know, if you give it 100% effort and don't wait for it to come to you. And you gotta be consistent. Oh, no. but, but just saying the same things over and over again for 20 years, first five years didn't work, first 10 years didn't work, first 15 years I was like, yo, I might not work, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Got to. And then finally it started yeah. kicking. Yeah. And I'm happy to see that I'm here to enjoy it kicking. Absolutely. You know, no, shout out to that. You know what I'm saying? My last words here today is, yo, heal yourself, heal each other, and you already know, healing is gangster. Definitely. Why I blessings? Stay safe. The corona's real, bro. Stay in the house. Get your money from the house. Mask yourself. If you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.